pull it out. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kathy Iverson, and I'm a co-lead for RPIW number 65. And we'll be recording out this afternoon at time of 20 minutes. So this is our lovely team for RPIW number 65. Um, the team members will introduce themselves as we go along. And I just would like to also acknowledge Bonnie Lee, who was one of our family members, who unfortunately was um, not able to be with us this afternoon, but thank you, Bonnie Lee. So our project for, so we were looking at improving the breakfast meal process for residents in Pineview Terrace. Um, the current situation was it is a relaxed <coughs> breakfast, and it would vary from 6.30 to 10.30 in the morning depending on when the resident um, got up. However, it was found that sometimes they were having to wait for their breakfast to be served to them or wait for assistance to complete their meal. With the menu, um, it was also identified that um, there were some food options or choices um, lacking that they wanted to have identified as well. Our theme for our project was for our residents and staff to partner together to experience a relaxed breakfast that includes a variety of food options. So this is just an example of our timed observation form, Prezan, that we utilize to create our value stream map. And the second time observation form um, just reflects the timings um, for one of the weights that we were looking to improve upon for our future statement. So our current state um, value stream map, um, the process was the resident's breakfast was cooked, they were seated at the table for breakfast, and then their breakfast was provided for them to consume. Two weights in those um, process boxes. The first weight was really related to when they actually got up, as in relation to when their breakfast was cooked. The second weight was related to them once they were seated at the breakfast table, then they're moving again for either their meal or for assistance. Our total lead time was two hours and 35 minutes with a cycle time of 45 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, it was found there was 29.5% of um, value added time for the residents and 70.5% of non-value <coughs> added time. Some of the starters that we looked at addressing was the menu, um, making sure it was the most up-to-date, that there was variety of options available, um, and then those weights about being served and receiving um, their breakfast. And the team will speak to the improvement work that was done to address those. Our future state map, um, so those starbursts that were identified again was the improvement work from the team. The one um, time improvement that we looked upon was that second way to vote. Um, not having them wait so long for them to receive their breakfast once they're at the table. Um, with the work that was done, it increased or improved our lead time to 2 hours and 22 minutes with um, a value added percentage of 32% and non value added of um, 68%. Tack time, we actually did calculate a tack time for this RPIW because we felt it wasn't so much about time, but it was about quality. And our residents have a relaxed breakfast, and we want them to be able to, con to continue to do that, and that they enjoy and complete their meal at their pace. Our percent load chart, so pre kaizen so this is just reflecting how many re uh, residents are in each house. There's five houses, 12 residents. It identifies how many residents are independent with their meal, how many would require assistance. And there's two CCAs for each house. Um, during the day, and then this is just the additional staff that's for um, all of the facilities throughout the day. So with the post Kaizen, um, it's pretty much the same. However, we added some additional staff to help um, between eight and nine o'clock just to help with that breakfast meal um, process. Hi, I'm. I'm Dora Gannett, and I normally work in mental health and addictions, and I'm the other co-lead for this RPW. So this is just demonstrating our pre kaizen spaghetti diagram. It shows, as you can see, lots of steps are had by all the CCAs, um, back and forth from residents' rooms into the kitchen to make breakfast and back out again. 
And our post spaghetti diagram did show some improvement. We're hoping we're going to save the CCAs about 618 feet every day walking um, just by adding additional support into the uh, breakfast service process. This is our fishbowl diagram, and I see it's upside down, but it just demonstrates um, we wanted to make sure we had a thorough understanding of all of the issues with breakfast service, and so we looked at the four broad categories of process management people in place. And this is our waste wheel. Our team observed on the GEMBA and identified a variety of waste related to our process. And on our second one here, we were able to address some or most of the items that um, showed up. A lot of the unresolved issues are really, we think, can be addressed through a 5S of all the kitchens in front of you. Uh, hello, good afternoon. My name is Carlos Villegas, and I work as a cook and food service worker at Pantry Chairs. So I'm going to talk about the bread box menu and the improvement like we did as a work team. I'm also working in coordination with Darcy about the, the nutrients of the food. Um, the first thing like, that we notice it is like uh, as workers and the staff at Ambuteras Terras wasn't follow, following a proper menu for breakfast. And on another hand, the residents were asking for for a variety of items of food. So we were having the, they were having the same breakfast breakfast every day, like a body eggs, just those and cereal stuff, which is boring for the residents, right? So however we figured out like we, we have already one breakfast menu at Pantry since we open it. So we work, on, we work on it and we just add some items. As you can see, like uh, we have the week menu from the Monday to Saturday. So we add some fresh fruit or canned fruit for every day. Like a, they have blueberries, apples or grapes, a variety of, of fresh fruit in the mornings. And also they have like a cereal, so cream of, uh, cream of wheat, sunny boy, oats <coughs> every day. Know what I mean? And also for boiled eggs, not just boiled eggs, they have a lot of different choices, scrambled eggs, omelets, or you know, like uh, uh, fried eggs, different choices for all the things because that's the same. Food every day, you're gonna get sick of it, right? And besides, we have, like, we have different choices, alternatives. Let's say one example, if they don't want egg, we can provide it another kind of protein, like uh, for example, cheese or we can give them like a cottage cheese, like a wheat fruit, so they, they have the same amount of values of um, nutrients for the residents that they need. Uh, thank you. Hi, my name is Tracy Van Gow. I'm a CCA at Pine Bee Terrace. We have come up with some work starters for nights on how and when to prepare for breakfast. One of the issues was cooking too early and not following the menu. With the work starter, it gives our residents a safe and fresh meal daily. We also came up with two work standards for breakfast service independent and dependent residents. This gives the residents a choice from the menu, but also special requests. I believe with the work standards, it will be more of a relaxed breakfast and following the eating philosophy. The wait time will also be shortened for each resident providing a fresh hot meal. Good afternoon, I'm Jody Hazelwood, the patient family advisor on this group. As I participated in this RPIW, it was apparent that there could be a better way to enhance breakfast service to the resi residents of Pineview Terrace Lodge. At first, there seemed to be immediate hesitation from some of the staff because they thought more work was required from them. Staff were informed that the in intent was to improve breakfast service to the residents by giving them more variety. This was a trial in houses D and E, and staff were encouraged to give their input and incorporate the changes for the benefit of the resident. A work standard was prepared for additional assistance for breakfast service for each house from 8 in the morning till 9. 
and the temperature of the food must be checked at 8.30 a.m. as per long-term care, food, and nutrition log as attached. I really enjoyed working with this team. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shannon Hurl, and I'm a recreation coordinator at Pine View Terrace. One of the other idea summary sheets that we addressed while we were doing this was the readily available access to the information of what the residents actually prefer, um, whether or not they needed assistance feeding with, sorry, whether or not they needed assistance with eating at dinner. So what we did was we changed our resident dietary summary forms that are available at every they're in every host in Pineview. They're listed in the cupboards where the staff are always able to find them. We use the same codes and colorings that are already in their care plans. So we're not reinventing the wheel. We just kind of took something across that is already easy for the staff to identify. We went through their, we went through and made a specific category for their favorite beverages, which as you can see, some of their beverage choices change over the course of the day. Um, we made our dislikes and likes column a lot bigger so that we could be more specific with what the residents enjoy. Um, and then we also added another category for fluid consistency because some folks need different beverages that are easier and if they're choking hazards they need to have those specific. And so then we had to make sure that the staff knew what they were looking for ahead of time. We also added a seating chart that has pictures of each resident, so once again, making it easy for casual, part-time staff that aren't always working in that house, that they were able to identify residents easily. And then folks that need assistance, we identified them again on this chart here. To make sure that all of our staff at Pine are aware of all the work standards that we've completed, we will also have an ongoing skills schedule to make sure that everyone's up to date and knows what's going on with the work standards. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Mary Luz Suarez. I'm a CCA from Pine Terrace. Uh, I'll be talking about the um, five S evaluation. Before uh, the pre score, uh, pre five S score is one, and now it's uh, the post five S score is two point nine. And um, before, as you can see, the uh, before five S, it's all messy, like the covers with all the jams and the coffee it's everywhere. And there's no label, and now there's a, it's all organized, and there's a label there, and we took the unnecessary stuff away, and there's a label already, and there is there is a work standard too for maintaining the breakfast condiments and hot beverages in the cupboards, so that we can uh, maintain and audit the virus. Just quickly go through some of the gains that we're showing on the target target progress report. Um, again, even though we didn't want to really focus on the time it took for breakfast, we, we did want to decrease some some wait time. And our wait time um, shows that we kind of we're not starting breakfast as early as we once were, so that lead time is shortened in that way. But we've also um, shown in the, in the cycle time that once residents have come to the breakfast table, they're not waiting near as long. And so we've almost um, deducted 30, 13 minutes per resident for that wait in, in between. Uh, Jody has agreed to come back and do some more surveys with our residents to ensure that they're happy with the changes that we've made in a month's time. So. Our, our last line here is showing somewhat of an improvement since we've implemented the changes, but we anticipate that that will increase over time once everything has been fully implemented. Our newspaper items, we try not to leave too much for you, Terry. Um, we've got a, a couple of things that were identified by staff and, and people on our, on our team around um, things that are related to brunch. So, uh, there used to be a regular Sunday brunch, and so Terry is going to work with her team to look at reinstating that brunch um, on, on Sundays. We also want um, 
to assist some of the night staff with that changeover uh, between morning and night shift because it's been delaying um, staff from, from being able to leave work during time and then also impacting breakfast and being able to get residents up and those sort of things. And the last thing will be just to continue with the with the checklist to make sure that all the staff are trained up on the things we've been doing. So in summary, um, residents we think are offered more choices at breakfast and can have food cooked at the time and way they want and when they want. We are hoping to provide a consistent, regular breakfast menu that includes all the food groups and has improved variety for residents. Um, we're hoping that we have decreased the time like we've shown um, and that that remains implemented so that residents aren't waiting as long for their breakfast once they're in the dining room. And we've also put some checks in place to ensure safe quality food is provided. And I think that the overall project has provided an opportunity to support a home-like atmosphere for the residents and trying to support and keep it. We want to say thank you first and foremost to the residents and families of Pineview. We had lots of input and that was that was really great. Um, all of the staff at Pineview Terrace, Jody and Bonnie Lee have been great. They, they've had lots of insight and input into our project. Sharla from Shelbrook has provided us with some recipes and some insight into their men menu in Shelbrook. Um, our, all of our I RPIWT members, Libby, Darcy from Dietary, Maintenance Staff, Terry, Frank, and Carol. So thanks everybody.